All right, a little bit of uh, anatomy of our potential opponent. Uh, in this uh, discipline, we call it, you know, Krav Maga, or self-defense in general, uh, the only rule we have is that we have no rules. That's the bottom line. When you fight for your life, uh, we don't have like forbidden spots or strikes. Anything that can be legally, morally justified to save our life, to save our life, or the life of our people that depend on us, or an innocent person in this case, they are allowed, of course. So, when we look at this uh, as an opponent, our first three targets area are eyes, throat, and groin. I don't care how big you are, how strong you are, uh, there is no way you can condition, uh, first of all, your eyes. It takes just a little bit of a scratch, something in your eye, just a little quick, little sand, you know, grain, grain of sand, and you cannot fight anymore. So, our first striking point will be always go high or low. Eyes, if we go start high, throat is not a very important strike, especially the, we're talking about here, the windpipe area. There is no way you can condition that. And uh, five pounds or even a little bit more, uh, you will crush that trachea. When the trachea is crushed, that uh, person, in this case, will need a very fast emergency trip to the hospital, otherwise they will not be able to breathe anymore. Then, of course, we go to the groin. Uh, this works not just for we men, but also for women. That's a sensitive part, but of course, men even more. So, eyes, throat, groin. Now we're going to start to look around other potential targets for self-defense. Ears, very, very powerful uh, target. It's not going to be life-threatening target, but definitely uh, with a technique we call ear slap, uh, we can uh, create a, uh, a damage to these eardrums that can create incapacitation and of course can create also a lot of pain. Then of course nose, nose can be powerful too. It may not be a stop and strike like other things we have, but especially if we go with pump strike, going up in, that can be very powerful too. Under the chin, uh, it's a way that you can create that sort of uh, brain shock that can create a knock, a knock down, definitely. It takes a little bit more probably of, of, of uh, dexterity to get there, but that's not a story. Then we go down the back of the head, the skull, okay? About two inches just below the skull. That's a very sensitive part. That can be a deadly part, a capacitation part. It must be always legally, morally justified. Then of course we go down here. Uh, we have collarbones, nothing really devastating. A good strike can give you a message, but it's nothing that will be at, like our first choice of strike in case of extreme self-defense. But from here, now we go to the solar plexus. It's a soft spot that technically it can give us a really good opening for powerful strikes, of course. Solar plexus can create that really uh, lack of breath and can be also knocked down. Going down to the side of the neck now, we have here, left or right, of course, two areas that also are uh, very important because we have the flow of blood going through. But also we have what we call is the vagus nerve. Uh, here a shock strike, like a knife end, or even a forearm strike to the vagus nerve can create an immediate knockdown. Something to consider about, okay? Now important, of course, uh, we go down and from here we go back to the uh, groin area, powerful strikes. Joints, elbows easily can be broken. Uh, you know, we don't want to do that unless of course there is an immediate, uh, really serious uh, justification. Same story with the joint of the knee and then joint of the ankles. Great important strike. So these are pretty much the most powerful strikes in case we need to use our body weapons and strikes that I'll show you now for self-defense. Then of course we have also had uh, the joints of your hands, fingers in this case, nothing uh, damaging, like you know, deadly, uh, but can definitely create great power in case you want to control. But these are more techniques about joint control. Now we will focus on strikes.